So, after their parents pass away suddenly, Haruka and his twin sister Sora move to their grandfather's old house in a small village where they used to spend their childhood vacations. Haruka starts reconnecting with old friends and acquaintances in the village, but Sora refuses to leave the house, even when Haruka starts attending school. As Haruka becomes more and more distant, Sora realizes she's losing her grip on him. One night, she goes to his room and tries to reconnect with him in a pretty intimate way, hoping to bring them closer together again. Sora asks Haruka to help her with something pretty intimate, taking her measurements for a school uniform. Finally, she starts attending school with him, but she's bummed to find out they're in different classes. Meanwhile, during gym class, Akira accidentally soaks Kazuha, who forgot her swimsuit, and takes her to dry off. Haruka finds Kazuha's phone and goes to return it, but ends up overhearing a pretty weird conversation between Kazuha and Akira, where Kazuha is calling Akira Onechan, which means big sister in Japanese. It's clear that there's some sort of close relationship between them, but Haruka isn't sure what to make of it. So, Kazuha catches wind that Haruka's been eavesdropping on their chat, and she wastes no time chasing him down to clear the air. And boy, does she drop a bombshell. Turns out, Akira is actually her older sis, but get this, they have different moms. It's like a soap opera, right? Because of their family's rep and all that jazz, Kazuha's pops can't exactly shout it from the rooftops that Akira's his daughter. This whole mess leaves Kazuha feeling majorly torn up inside, wrestling with resentment toward her old man and carrying this heavy guilt over Akira. But wait, it's not all doom and gloom. Haruka swoops in like a knight in shining armor and whisks Kazuha away on a date to lift her spirits. And guess what? Sparks start flying. They both clock that their feelings are moving at turbo speed, and things are heating up between them real quick. Meanwhile, poor Akira's out here hustling on her own, but the grind catches up with her, and she straight up collapses from exhaustion. Man, talk about a roller coaster of emotions. On their way home from school, Haruka and Kazuha are stopped by a worried Yahiro, who's freaked out because Akira is MIA. They rush to Akira's place and find her passed out from exhaustion. Kazuha is consumed by guilt, feeling like she's been so caught up in her feelings for Haruka that she neglected Akira. Akira recovers a few days later, but calls out Kazuha for abandoning Haruka and carrying around unnecessary guilt. Kazuha is forced to confront the truth and sinks into a depression, unsure of what to do next. But she finally works up the courage to show up to the festival, where she reunites with Haruka. He reveals that her dad had been secretly supporting Akira all along, and when Kazuha sees her dad praising Akira, she realizes she misjudged him. This clears the way for her to move past her codependency and fully embrace her relationship with Haruka. Haruka is eavesdropping on Akira and Kazuha's conversation near the girl's locker room, but this time Akira catches him and takes the phone from him. This changes everything. Haruka notices that Akira has been acting weird lately and decides to talk to her alone at school the next day. He sees the sadness in her eyes and wants to help her out. He remembers how she lost her mom's pendant when they were kids and offers to help her find it. They search for it by the old tree where they used to play, but Haruka is shocked to see that the tree is gone, destroyed by a landslide. He tries to dig around for the pendant, but no luck. They head back to Akira's place to take a bath and share a romantic moment. Later, at the festival, Haruka sees Akira crying while performing the sacred dance and rushes over to comfort her. Haruka bursts into Akira's room just in time to stop her from burning a crucial piece of evidence, the doctor's missing journal. It turns out that the journal reveals a shocking truth. Kazuha and Akira might be mistaken identities. Haruka suggests a DNA test to settle the mystery once and for all. Yahiro is hesitant, but Kazuha agrees, despite her mom's disapproval. Haruka fills Akira in on the plan at the shrine the next day, and they agree to wait for the results. But on the day the results arrive, Akira goes mie. Haruka tracks her down to the train station, where they have a heart-to-heart -heart until evening. Meanwhile, Kazuha and Sora deliver the DNA results to Akira at the station, but she's too scared to open them. Just then, Kazuha's mom shows up and reveals a shocking family secret. Akira's mom and hers were in the same hospital room, 
and Akira's mom had given her the pendant as a symbol of their connection. The DNA results confirm that Akira is indeed born of a different mother. Kazuha's mom apologizes and lets Akira keep the pendant. And in the end, Akira confesses her love to Haruka, and he feels the same way. Sora asks Haruka to help her with measurements for a school uniform. The next day, now drops by with some mosquito repellent for Haruka, since Sora is terrified of mosquitoes. She leaves pretty quickly, though. Then, Ryohei invites Haruka to sneak a peek at the girls cleaning the pool on the school rooftop. Haruka warns Ryohei not to get caught ogling now, and then takes off. Later, Ryohei teases now that Haruka, her so-called prince, has a crush on her, but she thinks Haruka doesn't like her back. Little do they know, something went down between them years ago. Now had run to Haruka's house to escape her parents arguing and ended up on top of him on the veranda with her clothes undone. It was a pretty awkward encounter to say the least. now has been carrying around guilt for what went down with Haruka years ago. But surprisingly, Ryohei, Akira, and Kazuha are all shipping Haruka and Nao hard. They orchestrate a meetup at the school pool on a Sunday, and when Nao gets spooked by a black cat in the girls' locker room, Haruka rushes in to save the day. They manage to hide from the school supervisor and finally clear the air. Haruka reveals he wasn't mad at Nao, just shocked by what happened that summer. Nao's relieved, but things get complicated when Sora, Haruka's sister, discovers now has been occupying Haruka's thoughts and starts trash-talking her at home. So, Sora's not exactly a fan of now these days, like, at all. She's not shy about showing it either, throwing shade right in front of Ryohei and now herself. Then, one day, Sora's cruising around the house and suddenly, boom, she catches Haruka and now getting busy in the living room. Well, you can imagine her reaction. She kicks now out on the spot, warning her to steer clear of Haruka for good. And get this, she even dumps the curry they cook together down the drain, saying she only wants Haruka's cooking. Ouch, talk about harsh. After that, Nao's feeling pretty low. She wants to see Haruka, but with Sora lurking nearby all the time, she has to play it cool. But Haruka, he's like Mr. Sunshine, always believing that Sora will come around and accept them both. He's heard from Ryohei that she's changed, and he's hoping Nao can get back to her old, cheerful self. Sora does kind of soften up a bit when she sees Haruka and Nao together, but she's still keeping her guard up. She'd rather keep her distance from the lovebirds. That's why she's a no-show when Haruka, Nao, Ryohei, Kazuha, Akira, and Motoka hit the beach for their annual summer trip. So Sora decides to crash the beach party, but her plans are derailed when she hears about a drowning incident and discovers that Haruka is the victim. Nao saves the day with her quick thinking and CPR skills, making Sora even more insecure. She becomes clingy and tries to keep Haruka from leaving the house, making up all sorts of excuses. Things come to a head when Sora forces Haruka to choose between her and Nao, but he just shrugs it off and heads to school with Nao like nothing's wrong. Later, Sora goes missing, leaving behind a cryptic text message. The gang bands together to search for her and Nao finally finds Sora at a bus stop in the rain. But Sora's not having it and accuses now of changing Haruka. Just then, lightning strikes the bus stop, and it catches fire. Sora realizes she left her beloved stuffed bunny inside, and now risks her life to retrieve it. As they reunite, Sora opens up about her fears. She's terrified Haruka will leave her behind. The next night, Sora shows up at the summer festival, and for the first time, she's willing to give now a chance. Haruka tries to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Sora about his relationship with Nao, but Sora's recent behavior, seeming unaccepting of Nao and even teasing Haruka, has him worried. He plans a date with Nao but can't muster the courage to tell Sora, instead pretending he's hanging out with Ryohei. However, the date is ruined when Haruka's mind keeps wandering back to Sora, and he ends up buying gifts for his sister instead of Nao. They plan to cook croquette curry together, but Sora's bad dream and subsequent illness cancel those plans. The next day, Nao notices Haruka trying to hide their date from Sora, but she plays it cool. Things take a weird turn when Haruka catches Sora masked in her room, whispering his name. It turns out she's had a crush on him since their childhood kiss during a game of pretend. Haruka takes Nao on another date, but he's still reeling from walking in on Sora's solo act. 
He tries to distract himself by suggesting a love hotel, but now sees right through it and asks if he truly loves her. Haruka is unable to answer and bails. Later, Sora falls ill, and Haruka stays home to care for her. When her fever breaks, Sora confesses her feelings to Haruka, and they consummate their relationship. As the twins grow closer, everyone notices, especially Kozue and Nao. One afternoon, they catch the twins in the act at the Kasagano residence, leaving no doubt about their relationship. Kozue freaks out and runs away after walking in on the twins, while Nao leaves calmly, but Sora couldn't care less. Haruka considers ditching school, but Sora tells him to shrug it off. The next day, Kozue vows to never speak to him again, and now officially ends things with him after his apology. That night, Haruka gets into a fight with Sora when he suggests they stop their relationship and things get physical. To make matters worse, they discover their parents left them with no money, and they're forced to live with relatives, but that means living apart. That afternoon, Haruka wakes up to find Sora gone and her room trashed. He frantically searches for her after receiving a troubling text that sounds like a suicide note. Now joins the search, revealing she confronted Sora earlier and saw them together that summer day, saying they're now even. Haruka remembers Akira mentioning a lake and races there, finding Sora. As he tries to stop her from wading deeper into the lake, they nearly drown together. Days later, they leave everything behind to start fresh in a new city overseas, where a family friend lives. Despite Kozue's disapproval, Nao believes they'll find happiness together.